All right, this morning we're going to look at how to find sequential streaks with data sets. And if you're looking for the quick answer, there is none, because this video I'm going to actually go through the logic just so for people who don't know how to do this uh, can learn, but this is not going to be one of those quick answer ones. Uh, just as a case in point, I want to use this just as a brief example. Um, if you're wondering why you would ever look for streaks or what is an example of someone looking for streaks, I, I think GitHub is a, a popular one, at least for developers, just because they do look at streaks here under contributions. You'll see the last 366 days and um, as you can see, when a person has posted code, it's colored differently. If not, there's a, a faded gray uh, box. Otherwise, the boxes are colored in with kind of a greenish color. And so it tracks your longest streak and it tracks your current streak. And we're not going to be looking at like the longest streak or the current streak, but we're going to look at how to just look at streaks in general. And so, with that being said, I have a very simple and contrived table. I say contrived because you wouldn't really want to store your data this way. For instance, if you're just looking at an action or, or not, you would want to use a bit. So in this little contrived table we have two fields, trading date and trading action. And you'll notice that trading date does not repeat itself. All this table is looking at is whether the person traded or didn't trade under trading action. So another example of this like in practicality because to be fair someone might not measure whether they traded or not but you might have a person who tracks um, paychecks not by date but just this is paycheck, the first paycheck of the year, the second paycheck of the year, the third, and so on and so forth. You know, did I save a portion of that paycheck or did I not? Again, they're looking at the streaks, the patterns of their behavior, the habits, if you would. So, uh, when we're looking for sequential streaks, what we're trying to do is we're trying to organize this data by this right here you'll see is a three-day streak. From the first to the third, it's one, two, three. On the fourth, though, we break that streak. So that's one, two of no trading. And then on the sixth, we pick it back up. So we have one, two. We have a streak of two trades. Once again, on the eighth and the ninth, we broke the pattern. So one, two of no. And then on the tenth, we traded. That was only one. On the eleventh, we didn't trade all the way through the thirteenth. So one, two, three. And then on the fourteenth, we traded. And on the fifteenth, we traded. So one, two. So essentially, we're looking for those sequential streaks. Alright, so I'm going to use a common table expression. And again, with SQL Server, just I think I've said this before, there are usually a thousand ways to solve every problem. Not really a thousand ways, but probably about six or seven. This is one of the effective ways at solving this problem. I've seen people use cursors and loops to solve this problem, and I don't really think that's the most effective, but they'll, they'll build a temp table, they'll loop through things, and they'll insert data, and it's not really the most effective way, at least in my mind, but it is one way in which you can do it. So if you want to use a loop and you're familiar with looping, you can. So the first thing I want to do is get an ID built. So the ID field is, if you had a, an ID field in the table normally, that would be int identity 1, 1. And this is kind of what this is doing, so 1 through 15. And you'll notice that we, uh, we're not partitioning by this, we're just ordering it by trading date. So it's ordered in, so 15th of the first, 15th, first, first. The next thing is I can, and I've seen people try to throw out this is why doesn't this work? And it's not complete. Let's go ahead and do this because this is popular. So some people will partition by trading action. And then they'll order by trading date. Thinking that that's going to be, I'm going to call this the second ID. Thinking that that will be the answer. And for a brief moment, it does kind of look like, except we need to order this by now, trading date. 
it does look like the answer because you have one, two, three, there's your streak. Then you have one, two, problem is you hit here and you have four, five, and then three, four. So what this is really doing is this is keeping the streak of whether there was a trade or not irrelevant to whether the streak was reset. So that would be like, again, going back to the GitHub example, that would be like, um, I think from here all the way to here, I could be wrong, but it looks like it's 12 days because that's five, that's four, and that's and uh, that's three. So that's 12 days. So all of a sudden we have a disruption. So no contributions on that day. Well, on this day was one day, right? That would be like if our program, even with a skipped day, continues counting, and that is the 13th day. Well, that's not continuing the streak. It is pretty funny when um, people will uh, they'll email some of these uh, applications which keep streaks, and they'll email them, and they'll be like, hey, can you reset my streak because, or not reset my streak, but can you continue my streak because I accidentally, you know, da-da-da-da-da-da, and it's, it's like people really, it's, you know, it's not that big of a deal, but... It is funny, people do that. So I guess if we were trading, we're like, oh, we didn't trade on the 4th. Oh, hey, could you reset my streak and just say that I traded? Just don't charge me the fee for trading. However, now if you look at this data set, one thing, quickly pause your, your YouTube video after I say this. You will see when people aim for this, they're actually not too far off from finding the answer because there is a pattern between these two right here, ID and second ID. And you will see a pattern emerge. So pause your, your video and see if you can figure it out and then of course pick back up and and see if you you got it right or maybe you'll find another pattern that I didn't find okay so you may have noticed there is a mathematical relationship between ID and second ID I'm gonna call this by the way trading ID I like second ID okay and I'm gonna call this ID difference so what we're going to do is we are going to subtract the trading ID from the ID. Excuse me. And now let's look at the difference. You will notice that we have a number the difference between these two that correlates with whether there was a trade or not. So for instance, we have three days of trading. The difference between one and one, two and two, and three and three is zero. When we get to the no, the trading, or sorry, the ID is four and five. The trading ID is one and two. The difference between both of those numbers is three. So we have a mathematical relationship between ID and trading ID. Um, and once we get to trade here, the difference between 6 and 4 is 2, and 7 and 5 is 2. So again, we have two trades, and the difference is 2. So you'll, if you if you just pause for a second and look, you'll see that there is a sequence here, but that the sequence is determined by these numbers, the difference between ID and trading ID. And so what we've done is we've looked at this mathematical relationship between these two fields. And now what we can do is we can do um, a row number, we can write, I mean, a row number, and we can partition by our ID difference field. It's like, wait, something is wrong. What happens when you code a lot is you can just feel when something's wrong. You're like, hmm, oh, I'm missing a by. Okay. And then we'll do briefly star okay and you will notice one two three one two one two one two one one two one one two three one two and of course actually what this would look like the final answer would be something like this and of course you could take it a step further and you can you know for instance let's suppose you wanted it to look similar to github where it didn't keep the streak of the nose I mean, obviously, that's all. GitHub's only keeping streaks of if you've contributed or not. Um, 
if you wanted to just keep a streak of the nose, then you would, or you didn't, then of course you could do your case win, and if the case is that there's a no, then basically null it. If the case is that there's a trade, then you can do your row number. So you could take it, take it a step further. This is how to look at sequential streaks. Uh, and again, as I said earlier, there's there's other ways to troubleshoot this problem. You can, yo, know, you could totally do a loop or a cursor. I don't, looking at this code right here, I don't think that a loop would be faster, and I don't think that a loop would be uh, quicker as far as the actual performance. I think this is one of the the more efficient ways. You could also probably do something like in our previous or one of our previous videos we did get the next day or the previous day's value. You could build a you know an ID and you could join it back on the table. And there's there's ways in which you could do it that way too. But again it would probably be about as complicated as this. So I know there's a lot of row numbers here but for the most part if you look at that mathematical relationship and you're always searching for that mathematical relationship. You pick up on that pattern and you can see these streaks. Uh, and then again, for those of you who want to play around, if you go to my GitHub here, click on SQL Server, and we'll go to Teaching Examples. And I went ahead and uploaded it today just so that people could play around. Now I have to remember what I named it. Uh, here it is, and it's Sequential Streaks. And so, it has the same amount of data and it has the common table expression. And like I so said, one of the things you could do is you could actually add another column, like for instance, whether the person traded stocks or options. And so then that would be something additional to your row numbers. Uh, but that's a quick example of how to do that. And you can play around with it. If it's something that you see coming up as well, it's always good to know.